Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. The EOD Mark II, mind. If and you're anything like me, on occasion you gotta move as much schmoo as humanly possible from one place to other. In that case, this is that. A diaphragm pump. Industrial in stature, a skookum in chucher. Diaphragm pumps are extremely robust, used throughout industry to move fluids and solids in slurries as you know stuff that's unexpected this will move wet sand with one eighth ball bearings in it all day every day extremely robust now having said that because they're used in such extreme environments they wear out constantly they're constantly blowing diaphragms and uh, on occasion a chunk of schmoo gets in there what can't get past the check valve and, and opens it up and you gotta just clean it out nothing wrong with it you take it apart and uh, you know something falls out and then it works again so how it works now some say this is a positive displacement pump and a positive displacement pump just means for every certain for a certain stroke or a certain rotation you get a, a specific amount of fluid out the outlet however because this is the, the a prime mover is air, uh, air is compressible, we do not get positive displacement. We get fixed displacement. For every chooch of this, we get a certain amount of chotch coming out the tail end. Now this guy is one to one. So if we put in 120 PSI of air pressure, we will get out 120 uh, pounds of, of pressure head. It also has extremely good suction characteristics self-priming and it'll pull 20 feet of of suction no problem at all and self well maybe not self-prime at 20 feet the construction of this that makes it so robust is the pumping elements are always separate from the flow of fluid which is being pumped so that allows it to do slurries and fluids i was using this one you can see she's uh, had a few hot suppers been put up wet I was using this one for my mini pilot plant, uh, crushing ore and, and separating the gold out. I was using these in the slimes and the tailings to, to get rid of them. And as long as we, we didn't allow the slimes to settle out and, and uh, cement together, this would pump it no problem. If, it did, if I did leave it for a day or a week or whatever and it cemented together, all I'd have to do is put some water in there, mix it up, and then this thing would self prime and pump it right out. But we're gonna see how that works, but just to describe how it works, the inlet is on the bottom, uh, comes in past here, up and over. There's two check balls on either side and a diaphragm. The piston moves to and fro. So when one side is open, when one side is pumping, the other side is inletting. When the other side is pumping, the uh, the obverse side is inletting so you get a constant um, flow out of this it is pulsing of course they go through an incredible amount of air recall this is one to one that means that I think this is rated at 150 liters per minute however many gallons that is that's how much air you're gonna go through and that is a hell of a lot of air at 120 psi in a very small form factor. Further, these are also rated for explosive atmospheres and for pumping flammable fluids like waste oil or engine oil, diesel fuel, all that sort of stuff. Because the pumping elements are separate and it's running on air, we don't have to worry about it exploding. Unless, well, here's, there's a caveat there. Because we have, we're using air as the prime mover, you don't think air is uh, particularly flammable or inflammable or whatever the fuck you call it but because we have air moving through this system it it generates static electricity so in order to dissipate that static if you're using this in an explosive atmosphere you must have the body the chassis grounded properly otherwise a static charge can build up just from the air moving out through this and uh, that's your ignition point now what horrors lie within here yeah you see well, there might be some gold in there so here are two of the check balls still seated despite all of that <laughs> sand in there so there'll be 
two check balls on the top, two check balls on the bottom. Again, if these don't seat properly, it will not chooch. Here's the inlet again, packed right full of the good stuff. And we can see why I set this aside. Not that it's completely fuckered, but it's not seating on the one side. So if one of these check balls doesn't seat, the whole pump is hooped. The old dope smokers adage rings true as far as rolly papers. Don't use blue because the sticks will poke through. Plainly obvious, these are built for ma with maintenance in mind. A couple of bolts just to get the big ball bearings out. Clean it up and she's back in service. You can smell there's something nasty going on in there. That's the thing about, even if you think, well, there's critters what'll eat anything. And in this case, even though it's just straight minerals crushed up, there's something was eating this while there was water involved. Ah! A little tappy tap tap. Tappy tap tap. Either tougher than it looks or I'm dumber than I sound. Ginger carefully now, I've been told those diaphragms, well, I don't have spare parts and those diaphragms are susceptible to holes in them if you bought them out. Not that I'd know. Wait. Who's this guy and what has he done with our beloved Uncle Bumblefuck? The thing is, in the comfort and safety of your own shop, you can be as slobby as you want, but when you're working with other people, these other guys that work in here, so I kind of got to keep her down to a dull roar because there ain't nothing worse than working in somebody else's filth. We have a little gravity assist circuit going on here. If I'd ever get this rubber roll down. Show you what's going on okay so you see in the bottom part the ball is caged in the housing and in the top part it's caged in the outlet but you see it is actually reversible because it's the same casting but this ball seat is set up so it seats with the ball coming down sorry framing you fuck with the ball coming down on the uh, outlet and the ball coming down on the inlet too. So it, it automatically checks. If you lose air pressure, it automatically checks that flow. Uh, you know, say you got 120 feet ahead, it's not gonna come gushing out your pump. It's gonna check on this, on this ball. So that's another advantage of this guy versus say a trash pump. If you lose power or you can turn it off so that once your sump or whatever it is you're trying to muck out is, is cleaned out it's got no more fluid this can dry pump all day but you're wasting air you turn it off and uh, it checks the flow it, it checks all that fluid in the lines further up and you don't get it gushing out the inlet so this we could take this ball seat out in order to get the ball out but instead what i'm going to do is just try and get all those little polka dots out with my prying bit Eyeballs. Uh, between you, me, and the fence post, in order to fix these, a lot of times you do not need to take them right A part right down to bare nuts. You can get in there and just give your little nuts a polish here. Sure. We're all well practiced at that. Having a look at the inwards, outwards, the air circuit is what's complicated in this little thing. It's not complicated, but it's more complicated than the fluid pumping side. Well, the liquid pumping side. Now this looks to be like a valve. However, well, it'd be easy to mistake for a valve. It's not a valve. It's just a mechanical connection, just a uh, connecting rod. That's it. That's all it does. It, hits, it goes in here in this um, nitro, uh, not nitro. That's the material. That 222 designation is, you can get these for all sorts of applications, all sorts of different chemicals. So you can get nitrile balls. You can get stainless steel balls. You can get... Uh, Viton seals, you can get all sorts of different stuff, and that's just the designation in the nomenclature as written down by the uh, product number. In here, we have some Delrin, 
Del Delran 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 sleeving here. That's really good um, for dimensional stability in wet atmospheres because all these kind of hydrocarbon long chain molecules they do pick up moisture in the air and they swell. You wouldn't want this to swell because it's a quite a tight fit. So here's what's going on. We have a pilot valve and then we have the main valve. The main valve is what shuttles air over one side through these T-drillings or t'other. Now you see how far back this one is and how far back this one is. That main valve here, this is just a cap, but the main valve in there it shuttles back and forth in this valve, in this uh, valve cylinder, in this body. And the lands in the valve cover up or uncover a port and that allows air to go from the inlet over to one side of the diaphragm. Now how it's controlled is the diaphragm is the actuator so the diaphragm pushes over it pushes over and this guy yeah you can even see it there this guy actuates on on the pilot valve to pop that over. So the pilot valve is what's doing the thinking. The pilot valve shuttles air. It's the same thing. It's a, it's a little rod in there and it'll have lands uh, machined into it. And those lands cover or uncover ports. And depending on which ports are covered or uncovered, it shuttles air to the main valve. Now the main valve is a lot bigger. You gotta use a lot of flow through there. And the bigger the valve, the lower the pressure drop in, in the valve. So you don't, want, you don't want a whole bunch of pressure drop through your valve because you want the pressure drop to be actually doing work against the diaphragms. So that's why we have a pilot in order to use a little bit of air to do the control. And then the main valve shuttles the, the majority of the air, well, all of the air over to the diaphragms. Essentially, this just chooches back and forth and that's what pumps the fluid. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, so as I said, on the, on the flow rate, it's going to use a hell of a lot of air. It's going to be use the same amount of air as, as it's pumping fluid. It's also going to have the, roughly the same, well, pretty close, my, minus losses, the same amount of pressure head. So if you put 120 PSI in here, it'll allow you to have 120 PSI of head, which uh, I think I misspoke. It's not 100 and, uh, 120 feet that's uh, times 0.43 so yeah you'd be at 100 or 250 feet of head this thing will provide just a wee precaution now these are stainless bolts and of course stainless high nickel high chromium they love to come together and not come apart so for the sake of a couple pennies worth of never sneeze I just goop some on there and uh, Help the next guy out, because the next guy is going to be you. These nutted studs are crushing the elastomer, the, the nitrile diaphragm. So you, you need but one or two ugga duggas on there, and then come back. You, no need to go all 300 pound Dutch boy apprentice on the thing. And you just come in here with your proper torque wrench, and click. Snug, that's all you need. You don't want to ruin a, a thousand dollar pump on account of being overzealous. But they're only an eight hundred dollar pump. Not after you get through with them, they ain't. Hey, we got the one inch bull hose on here. I got a quick coupling on this valve. The other thing I didn't mention was the exhaust muffler that just mainly keeps the big chunks of meat out from the exhaust side, but also it quiets it down a little bit. This thing will run all day dry. It, it doesn't need water in it. And it is, you see my fingers there, it is developing pressure. That's just my hammer sucking wind.
Good excuse to wash the floor anyway. That is the diaphragm pump. You hear that scroll compressor kicking on and off. That's, uh, that'll put out, well, nominal 20 CFM at 110 PSI. So you can see how much air that goes through. Yeah, pretty skookum bit of kit there. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.